Hi, I'm Jessica from Jessica Wanders, and this is the final episode of my 2023 Pantry Challenge. If you're new here and have somehow landed on the very last episode of my Pantry Challenge, I'll leave a link up here so you can watch the entire thing from the beginning. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to see more videos from me and check out the join button for other ways to support my channel. Let's see what I came up with this final week of my challenge. Good morning. This morning, I am going to make up some banana pancakes. Whole wheat, whole grain banana pancakes. I've got cinnamon, baking powder, salt, vanilla, whole wheat flour, oil to fry them in, eggs, and a milk that I'm gonna make up. I'll probably top it with some peanut butter and some maple syrup. I'm using up skim milk powder and whole wheat flour from the pantry. I'm gonna make a double batch and see if I can. Oh, I don't know if that's, if I can get rid of that entirely, but I'm gonna try. Lots of banana pancakes. I've got these bananas in the grocery haul and I just completely forgot. We haven't had any fresh fruit lately. So I just even forgot that they were there. We ate some of them and then I forgot about these ones. I could throw them in the freezer, but I'm just gonna use them to make some banana pancakes. I will post a link in the description below for the recipe that I'm gonna try to follow. Uh, I wanted to find one that only used whole wheat flour, so I did that and I'll post a link below. I'm gonna use my electric skillet, so I'm just preheating it to 350. Two cups of whole wheat flour. Two tablespoons of baking powder, which seems like kind of a lot of baking powder, but I'll give it a go. One teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Mix that all up. Good, good. Gonna mash those bananas. We need one and a third cups of milk. I'm gonna use about six tablespoons of skim milk powder. One and a third cups of milk. I maybe should have used a bigger bowl. Two eggs. Two tablespoons of maple syrup. Wait, oh, I'm doubling the recipe. Four tablespoons of maple syrup. That's a lot, actually, of maple syrup. That is a lot of maple syrup. Okay. I mean, I'm not going to complain. <laughs> Three. Woo, four tablespoons of maple syrup. Maybe I'll only be putting peanut butter on top of these pancakes. Peanut butter on maple syrup banana pancakes. That'll be good. And I didn't have the butter out, but I need some butter to add to this. So I've got that too. I thought that they were just asking for butter to fry it in, but that actually is going to go in this mix. Some melted butter in there that's going to be good because apparently this recipe wants all the different kinds of seasonings we're going to throw some vanilla in there so we've got vanilla cinnamon maple syrup i'm not sure that's entirely necessary but here we go that's a lot of flavorings actually Whisk that all up good. Okay, now we're just gonna mix these two together till they're just combined. Mmm. I 
looks like a pretty good consistency pancake batter. Let's cook. I'm gonna use a third of a cup measure and make these pancakes. Let me know in the comments if you like to fry your pancakes in oil or not. I've had mixed results with using oil or, or butter or things to fry them in. I'm not sure that it does a lot. These pancakes sure seem fluffy from all the baking powder, maybe. Three minutes aside, two minutes aside, maybe I'll check them out. They smell very banana-y. My skillet is a little bit too hot. I keep trying to turn it down, but it's not really turning down very quickly. Yuck. So they're looking really, really, really brown. And they probably wouldn't normally, <laughs> but that's what we got. Okay, I think we've got the temperature a little more correct now. Pancakes. Pancakes for all week. Oh, yummy. Yeah, yeah. They, all of my pancakes are brown. Very, very brown today. That's okay. They still smell absolutely wonderful. <laughs> I turned it way down. It's okay, it's okay. I have my free peanut butter. It was free from Savon for using my bank card. Mm, so I'm excited about this. I never buy this because it has what? Hydrogenated vegetable oil in it, right? Hydrogenated vegetable oil or hydrogenated, hydrogenated. We don't want that. Icing sugar. There's icing sugar in here. This is like getting free Nutella <laughs> is what this is. But yeah, we're gonna put it on our pancakes. I don't know, these pancakes just wanted to be really very brown. Fine pancakes, fine with me. We have pancakes for the whole week, most definitely. All right, I didn't honestly know that Western Family put icing sugar in their peanut butter, but that explains a lot about why Mr. Wanderers really likes it. <laughs> And it spreads really easily because it has hydrogenated vegetable oil in it. Mmm. I really like it too. But I just I can't bring myself to buy it anymore regularly. But once in a while, it's okay. I think that the peanut butter is gonna go really well with the banana-iness of the pancakes. Oh, they look really nice. They are very fluffy. Mm, and they are very banana-y. If you wanted some more sweetness, you could add some maple syrup to that, but I'm really enjoying this. Very, very fluffy. Yeah, for a whole wheat pancake, they're very, very nice. Whole wheat flour kind of tends to make things heavier, but these are nice. If you had three bananas, you could double this recipe and have some bananas left over to put on top, which would be really good. <laughs> Thumbs up for me. Banana pancakes. Banana whole wheat pancakes using up whole wheat flour, using up two cups of whole wheat flour. I think I have maybe a cup left. And look how many extra pancakes it made. That's great. That's a double back to the recipe that I, I posted in the description below. Mr. Wanders will put bean butter on these and, and take them to work as sandwiches. Because I don't want to go out and buy any groceries this week, I'm going to use the last can of my evaporated milk to make up one liter of milk. 
taken the rest of my skim milk powder and put it in this jar with the instructions. I might even make it out to the camper to stock the camper for camping season. Even if I don't enjoy the skim milk powder to drink, I have found it pretty nice to use in recipes uh, just to quickly do up a little bit of milk if you don't have any on hand especially. But I do know that one can of this evaporated milk makes me a nice liter of milk that I don't mind putting in my coffee or tea. And I can eat cereal with it. I just mix one can of the evaporated milk with two and a half cans of water. And there we have it, some milk for things. Ta-da. Today, I am going to make a recipe suggestion from Susan Choja. Way back in week one, she said make Hello Dolly bars. I have never heard of them before. Apparently they are also known as seven layer, seven layer bars or magic cookie bars. And look, right here on my, on my Eagle brand uh, sweetened condensed milk, there they are, magic cookie bars, but I'm not gonna follow that recipe. I found a recipe online that I like, so I will post that link in the description below. I did use the sweetened condensed milk from the pantry that I wanted to use up, but I have more in the downstairs pantry. So right now I'm trying to use up these graham cracker, graham biscuits, graham wafer wafers. I am, Susan, I'm going to chop up these marshmallows and I might just eat some of these. <laughs> but I'm gonna try chopping up these and putting them on the top as well. I don't see why that wouldn't work. It uses sweetened condensed milk, graham wafers, chippets. I'm going to use walnuts instead of pecans because that's what I have. And I have some shredded coconut, butter, and I'm going to use these marshmallows. So let's give this a try. Sounds like obviously a yummy thing. We'll call it a breakfast because I'm probably going to eat a bar with my tea in the morning. <laughs> but it's definitely a dessert you could use to snack on whatever. It's going to use up some stuff. Yay! Okay, I have just about one sleeve of these graham crackers, plus whatever's in this little bag, which isn't very many. We're just gonna grind them all up in my food processor. We're aiming for two cups, is it? Two cups of crushed graham crackers. Usually one sleeve is enough, says the recipe. Easy peasy. I'm not sure about recipes telling me that I need 10 tablespoons of things, but 10 tablespoons is a half a cup plus two tablespoons. So that's how much butter we're gonna melt. I'm gonna preheat the oven to 325. All right, we've got 10 tablespoons or a half a cup plus two tablespoons of melted butter. I'm gonna add to these graham crackers. Looks perfect. I did kind of check and scrape down once or twice, but it looks like it's pretty good. I'm not going to line my nine by nine inch tray with papers of any kind or foils, but I am going to grease it. All right, so we're gonna put it in this pan. Our graham cracker butter mixture. I didn't really measure how many, how many cups of graham crackers that was, but we're gonna use it all. Uh, yep. That's what's happening. The recipe did say one sleeve makes two cups, so I think it'll be fine. And then it says press it down. I don't know why I would 
use my hand when I could just use a spatula. We have a nice flat uh, graham crust. The recipe that I found that I'm using didn't have marshmallows, but yes, absolutely, Susie, and we're gonna add marshmallows. She said you could probably add marshmallows to it. I think I can, but what I've done is I reduced the number of, no. <laughs> I've reduced the number of chocolate chippets by a quarter cup, and I only used three quarters of a cup of walnuts and chopped them up to make room for the marshmallows. I don't know, we'll see how it works. Now we're just basically gonna spread these things out on top of the graham cracker crust. This seems like a lot of chocolate. Like they wanted more chocolate than this. I want it to be mixed up with marshmallows. So I'm not sure when I should add the marshmallows because they're not in the recipe, but I feel like they would go well with the chocolate chippets. Because I cut up large marshmallows, they're kind of sticky, kind of stuck together. I wanted them to kind of be mixed in with the chippets. I'm just doing my own thing now. Do what I want. I don't think it matters, really. Okay, I'm just gonna do the chippets and then the marshmallows and then the walnuts and then the, the uh, coconut and then the top. Just trying to break these up so they're not so stuck together. I think it'll be great. How can this be bad? This has got to be wonderful. And then walnuts, some chunkier than the other ones. One cup of fancy shredded sweetened coconut. Mm. I mean, coconut's not my favorite. I think it's just the texture because I don't mind the taste of it at all. I like coconut milk. It's not the taste of the coconut, but maybe just the texture of these little coconut strands. Mm. But I don't hate it. Just not my favorite. Mr. Wanders loves it. Loves it, loves it. One cup of fancy coconuts. Time for the topping. This beautiful stuff. <laughs> Try to cover every single spot with this sweet and condensed milk. Okay, I scraped as much as I could out of the, uh, the can. Got all the sweet and condensed milk I could out of there. <laughs> this is so yummy. Now we're going to put it in the oven 25 to 30 minutes until the edges are brown. It says into the oven at 325. That's 25 minutes. It looks kind of puffy and brown. I don't know if that's all marshmallow that's browning like that. I think I'm gonna give it another five minutes because this side doesn't look brown at all. Mm. Oh, I think the marshmallows kind of puffed up. That's what I think. It smells very sweet. Very excited about this. This is the hardest part of this recipe. It now says to leave this alone to cool for one hour. And if you know me at all, that's not a thing I like to do. Wait to eat things. It smells very coconutty and sugary, of course. This is what it looks like on the side. 
Okay, I'm gonna go distract myself for an hour. We'll come back and see what it looks like. All right, I waited patiently for an hour. It's not totally cooled down, but I really wanna try it. So we're gonna give it a go. Seems really kind of gooey. I think in this case, the longer you can leave this to cool, probably the better it's gonna be. I wanna be even more patient with that. I think if you can leave it even longer than an hour, maybe. Mm. It's very chewy. It's very chewy and good, but if you can leave it even longer than an hour. My marshmallows are very sticky still, and the chocolate is all very, still very melty. So I'm probably gonna throw this in the fridge, but I wanted to give one a try. See what it looks like. See how melty it still is? I mean, this has gotta be good, right? <laughs> but if you want something you can pick up and eat, maybe leave it to cool for longer. Mm. Mm hmm. Yes, of course that's very good. I want that graham cracker crust trying to cool even more and turn into more of a solid crust. So an hour is definitely not quite long enough. Unless you want a really messy, yummy, chewy treat, then it's perfect. Oh, the marshmallows are totally okay in there. Really gooey, ooey goodness. You could eat this over ice cream or with your morning coffee for breakfast. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> I like the coconut in there actually, because otherwise it would really just be an entirely gooey mass of melted chocolate and melted uh, marshmallow. So the coconut kind of gives it some texture. Obviously it's wonderfully good, lots of sugar. Thank you so much for the suggestion, Susan Choja. Or Hello Dolly bars or Hello Dolly squares. This used up a ton of stuff. All my graham cracker crumbs. Um, most of my marshmallows. I think all the marshmallows are gone now anyways. Uh, whether they made it into the bars or not, they are gone. Perfect. Perfect with my ingredients that I had in the pantry. Thank you so much. Yay. Yummy. I'm going to eat some of these. All right. I put these in the fridge for quite a while and they are very solid now. They were nice and and gooey and warm when they came out of the oven, but they hold together much better once they're cooled and the crust, the graham cracker crust um, kind of is more solid now. So that's what they look like after they've been in the fridge. Very nice. I can't believe I've never tried them before. They don't even remind me of anything that I've ever really had. I love it. I think that I'll make it. It was so easy, so easy, so quick, so easy to make. So I'm pretty happy with it. Yay, thumbs up for me. Even the coconut, and I'm not especially fond of coconut, but it's really good in here. These Hello Dolly bars, there was two layers in this container. Uh, once I, I carved them out of the, the baking tray. And they're such a big hit. I'll be making these more often. Maybe as snacks to bring to parties or at Christmas. Mr. Wonder just loved them too. Hello, this week for lunches, I am going to make ham and yellow split pea soup or habitant soup or Canadian yellow split pea soup. I will leave a link in the description below for the recipe I am loosely going to try to follow. I'm gonna to try to use up the rest of my yellow split peas. I need more than this, I think. The recipe calls for two and a half cups. Luckily, I have more split peas. I have some more yellow split peas in the pantry, so that's fine. We'll use whatever we need to, but we'll use up the rest of this bag for sure. I'm using up actually some carrots from the garden, celery from the freezer, thyme, and a couple of bay leaves, one whole onion, salt and pepper, and a ham bone. So I've got this ham bone from the freezer and it doesn't have a ton of meat on it. I'll, t I'll get off of it what I can, but I've also got some slices of ham that I can dice up and throw in there as well. The recipe calls for eight cups of water. 
I'm going to probably throw some of these chicken bouillon cubes in there just to give it a little extra flavor. It's one of Mr. Warner's favorite soups, Habitat soup. Sometimes I can it so that he has some that he can just take to work. It's really easy to make and, uh, and he really likes it. We're gonna make up some Habitat soup for lunches. One meaty, hopefully meaty ham bone. It's not too bad. I should be able to get some meat off of that. Eight cups of water. Celery. One medium onion, diced. And add two of these chicken bouillon cubes, just to give it a little extra flavor. I'm gonna do two small bay leaves or one large bay leaf. Recipe did ask for only half an onion. I have this giant bag of onions if you have been following me for a while, you know that at some point I bought a 50 pound bag of onions and they are still in the basement. So I'm trying to use up as much onion as I can lately. I don't mind putting a whole onion in there. That's fine. Two teaspoons of dried thyme. Well, there was one and three quarter cups of yellow split peas left in the bag. I'm gonna use them all. That's the end of the yellow split pea bag. Oh, there's some more in there. Get out of there. Okay, there, now they're all gone. Yay. Two and a half cups of yellow split peas. You do wanna rinse them really well because the water starts out really murky like that and you just wanna keep rinsing them until that water looks clear. Also, the split peas start to look really, very yellowy. Clear water. Two and a half cups of rinsed yellow split peas. And some carrots. Okay, we're gonna bring that to a boil. And then we're gonna reduce the heat to a low and we're gonna simmer it on low for three hours. Stirring occasionally. I'm just gonna flip that ham bone sort of over every time I'm in stirring it. I'm gonna maybe stir it every half an hour or so. Flipping the ham bone over to half an hour. This is how things are looking after two hours. It's really starting to smell wonderful in here. Split peas are definitely cooking. <laughs> definitely cooking for sure. I'm gonna leave the lid off kind of a little bit just to let it evaporate some and get nice and thick just a skew. I think now comes the messy business of taking this ham out of here and taking all the meat off the bones. And it's going to be really like covered in gooey, gooey, split pea mushiness. Did fish out the bay leaves. That was some messy business, but I did manage to get some ham off of the ham bone. Not bad. I'm gonna add that in there. So I'm gonna stir that in there. Split pea and ham soup. I was gonna use my immersion blender to make it a little bit creamier but this looks pretty good all by itself so we've got some ham in there split peas onions carrots it's a wonderful looking soup for lunches
Mm, I don't think it needs any salt at all. The ham is kind of salty. Plus I added those bouillon cubes. So I didn't want to add any salt when I was cooking and it doesn't really need salt now. Pretty good the way it is. I love this soup. I don't think I love it as much as Mr. Wanders does, but, but it's really very good. I think it was a smoked ham, so it has a little bit of a smoky flavor to it. And it just depends what kind of ham you use, kind of ham bone you have. Yummy. Split pea and ham soup, habitat soup for lunches this week. And I used all of my split peas up from the pantry. Yay. Hello, for dinner tonight, I've come up with an elaborate plan to use up rice. It involves a lot of ingredients. <laughs> I'm gonna make a one pot French onion rice recipe that I found online. I'll post a link in the description below. I'm gonna add some ground, fried up ground beef to it. At the bottom of the recipe, it says to add uh, chicken. I'm gonna add some ground beef. Um, and then it's like a caramelized onion, kind of casserole -y one dish rice meal that I'm super excited about actually, but I'm gonna use ground beef instead. I am loosely, loosely gonna try to follow. So it uses ground, well, I'm gonna use ground beef, garlic, onions, uh, some spices, some oregano, oregano and thyme, Worcestershire, salt and pepper. This is beef broth and then rice, more rice. I'm trying to use up this rice. Butter, I'm gonna fry the onions in this butter. I don't have any Gruyere cheese, so I'm gonna use a combination of mozzarella and some Parmesan to kind of mix in there. We'll see how it goes. That's what I'm gonna do, using up what I have and trying to use up this rice from the pantry. Hope it's really good. I'm gonna caramelize those onions in about four tablespoons of butter. It's definitely the longest part, I think, of the recipe, because it can take 20 or 30 minutes to caramelize those onions. And keep stirring these every five minutes for 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes. You don't want to burn them. I'm like a medium low heat. Uh oh. Too high, too high. Turn it down a little bit. Set aside the caramelized onions for now. And I'm gonna fry up my ground in the seed. I'm gonna fry up that ground beef until no pink remains. I'm not gonna drain the ground beef. It's, it was a lean ground beef and I don't wanna lose all that good caramelized onion in the bottom of the pot. So I'm just gonna uh, set this aside without draining it. And I'm gonna add about two to three more tablespoons of butter. Lots of butter. Probably just two, cause I've got some fat from the ground beef frying up. Two cups of rice, rinsed. I'm using basmati rice, because that's what I have. Three cloves of garlic. Uh, three large, humongous, giant cloves of garlic, because that's what I've got. More garlic is better. Two teaspoons of thyme. One teaspoon of oregano. I'm gonna fry that for about two minutes. That smells 
so I'm kind of lovely with all that time in there. It's kind of sticky. Maybe three tablespoons of butter would work, even with the beef fat I had in there. One tablespoon of Worcestershire. 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 It is really starting to smell. French onion soupy goodness. And one liter or four cups of beef broth. And we want to cook that rice however long your rice takes to cook that you're using. My basmati usually takes about 17 minutes. Bring that to a boil and then cover and cook your rice however you would cook it until it's done. Then I'm just gonna remove the rice from the heat and let it sit for five minutes. Oh, that looks very nice. Ground beef, one pound of ground beef. And our caramelized onions. And I don't have any Gruyere cheese, but I'm using one cup of uh, mozzarella cheese and a half a cup of Parmesan cheese. Add that in there too. And then there was salt and pepper in the ingredients, but we didn't use it in the recipe. So I'm just gonna add a bunch of pepper to this. And then I'll just salt to taste once it's all mixed together. The beef broth probably has salt in it. I don't think it was a low sodium beef broth that I put in there, so it'll have salt. Now we're just gonna mix all of this up together. Whoa, mix. Cheesy goodness already. It smells really like onion, French onion soup. I'm not sure that the look of it is super appetizing, but it does smell good. It's very cheesy and yummy gooey looking. Lots of onions. Whoa, it's good. All right, I did taste it and it definitely does need some salt, but you can just salt to taste. I'm not sure it's the prettiest looking meal. It smells so good. Just all those caramelized onions and the cheesy goodness of the gooeyness. Then just add whatever sides you want to your dinner. I've got some green beans from the garden in the freezer to use up. And we actually still have one bag of Caesar salad left over from ages ago. That is still really good. Round out your onion, French onion rice with hamburger meal. There we go. Ta da! All right, let's try this rice. It's a nice rice with ground beef. The cheeses are pretty good in there. All mixed up, kind of like, oh, you can see it's gooey on the onions. Lots of onions, actually. A good amount of onions in there. I think if I try it again, I might put the onions in the rice and the ground beef into a casserole and then put the cheese on top and melt it in the oven for maybe a little while. But this is really good. I wouldn't really change the taste of it, but it might look better. Hmm. If you had that Greer cheese, it would probably have more of that French oniony taste, but the mozzarella works fine in there and the thyme is a very nice spice goes with it. For dinner. say it was the fastest meal. Caramelizing the onions was 20 minutes. The rice took maybe 20 minutes uh, plus, well, 
I also added the ground beef and that probably took at least five minutes. So 45 minutes, which isn't the quickest meal, but I think it'll make two dinners and a lunch. So kind of worth the time. Yummy. Hello for dinner tonight. I am going to try a recipe suggestion from Evil Game Sprite. Way back in week one, they had a bunch of great suggestions for lentils and mung bean. And one of them was for a mung bean curry. I dug up a recipe that looks really pretty good. I will post it in the description below. I'm going to loosely try to follow it. I have to make some substitutions, but uh, otherwise I'm going to give it a try. Mung bean coconut curry. Obviously we're going to use some mung beans and some coconut milk. Onion. I've got some celery, garlic, parsley flakes. This is the last of the rice. No more rice. It's about one and a quarter cups of rice. I'm gonna cook it up. Chili powder, paprika. I don't have smoked paprika. I just have regular paprika, but we'll use that. Some turmeric, and I don't have fresh ginger. I just have powdered ginger, but I'll use that as well. I am almost out of coriander. Woo. So I'm gonna have to grind up some more. This is my own, um, I just let my cilantro go to seed, and then I, save the seeds and I grind them up to make coriander. You can make coriander with toasted seeds or just regular seeds. I'm not gonna toast these, I'm just gonna grind them up. Cilantro seeds or coriander. For most of the world, coriander is just coriander and only, I think, in North America, maybe parts of Europe, call cilantro cilantro. Um, I did for a long time and I was really confused, but I think I finally have it figured out. Cilantro is the leaves and stem of the plant and then coriander is the seeds of the plant but in most of the rest of the world coriander it's all coriander and these are called coriander seeds uh, the whole plant is coriander and these are coriander seeds so let me know if i'm still wrong <laughs> i don't know but anyway i'm gonna grind it up and make some more coriander so mung bean coconut curry for dinner tonight probably for just one dinner with that amount of rice it's not a lot of rice. Da, 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 da. Oh, and the recipe I found uh, asked for olive oil, but I'm just gonna use canola oil. Picking up the last of my rice. Yay. <laughs> I'm so excited. I have to grab a whole nother bag of rice or start eating up all my potatoes. go it has such a nice sort of lemony kind of lemony smell it smells amazing fresh like that freshly ground if you wanted a finer grind than that you could put it through a coffee grinder but i'm okay with this all right now we have a fuller bottle of coriander ground coriander and we've got our three teaspoons of coriander we need for the curry Two stalks of celery. I've got some frozen celery here. And three large cloves of garlic. I'm gonna add all the spices. So that's three teaspoons of coriander. I'm gonna use one teaspoon of ginger. That's a lot because this is, this confuses me every time. I don't know if you've seen me make this mistake before, but I think it's half, I think it's a teaspoon, but it's actually a half a tablespoon in these measuring cups. But I keep messing up. So 
this i i always think this is the tablespoon i think this is the teaspoon but it's not it's the half half a tablespoon which is bigger it is bigger by 2.5 milliliters uh, than this which is the teaspoon measuring bit i don't know we could take some of that paprika out of there <laughs> that's a lot of paprika but i don't know we'll probably take out the coriander with it Mm. I might take off that half a tablespoon measuring cup right off of these so that I can't make that mistake anymore. Like just take it off the rings. Just make it go away. Half a teaspoon of chili powder. One teaspoon of turmeric. And I'm going to use chicken stock because I don't have any vegetable stock. It asks for three cups. So I think I'll probably use two cubes of stock each, each cube is supposed to make two cups, but I'm going to use two of these cubes. You could use vegetable ones if you have them. I'm not even sure this these actually have any chicken in them. So it's kind of probably still pretty vegetarian. I did check, and there's no actual chicken in here, but in the flavorings, it does say that it contains egg. Artificial flavor artificial flavor artificial flavor contains egg so not quite vegetarian or not quite vegan anyways two cups of rinsed mung beans it says to add the coconut milk but i think i'll wait until the mung beans are cooked to add the coconut milk I'm gonna bring that to a boil and then simmer for 25 to 30 minutes until the mung beans are cooked. Cover, 25 to 30 minutes. As for three cups of coconut milk, I'm just gonna add this one can of coconut milk. See how it does. I like a thick curry, so I don't want to make it too soupy with coconut milk. It does smell like a little bit too much turmeric -y for me and not enough uh, spicy. Maybe the coconut milk will kind of tone down that turmeric a bit. So I am tasting it, just to, I was tasting it to make sure the beans were finished, but I'm tasting it for flavor too. It's not at all spicy, uh, but it does have a, a nice flavor to it. Mm. We need some salt, red pepper flakes. Salt, salt to taste. I suppose you could just add salt to your individual bowls. Then I do want a little bit more spice in there, so I'm gonna add some red pepper flakes. Let me try that. Yeah, I could even use some more powdered cayenne. All right, let's put some rice in bowls. I don't think that I'm gonna follow the instructions to add parsley. If I had some fresh parsley, maybe I would do that. I'm not going to. It's exciting that this is the last little bit of rice that I have from the pantry challenge. Took a fair amount of time to use up that rice that I had. I'm pretty excited about this curry, but the mung bean curry. You could make this mung bean curry any way that you make curry. Just add it in there. It looks really good. Seems pretty thick. Little mung beans are pretty tasty. And there is my mung bean curry for dinner. Might come back and have some more, but we'll start with that much. Let's give it a try. Those mung beans are really nice. I really like them. I like them in the soup and I like them in this curry. It's kind of nice. It's not a very spicy 
curry. So, you know, give it a try if you want. I, I will have to tell Mr. Wanders. I will have to tell Mr. Wanders that he needs to add more, more spicy things to this. But it's very flavorful. It's very yummy. Yeah, I'm going to enjoy this. Thanks so much for the suggestion, Evil Game Sprite. I will definitely be trying mung bean curry again. Uh, it's a great way to use up two cups of mung beans. That's brilliant. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up for me. I'm going to try other mung bean curries. This is brilliant. Mm, I really like the texture of the mung beans. I like it a lot. Yum, yum. This is everything that's left at the end of my 2023 pantry challenge. I do have some powdered skim milk left over. I think it's probably going to be put in the camper for camping season. These are the mung beans that I have left. I'm going to continue on experimenting with sprouting mung beans. This is my second attempt at sprouting mung beans. They're really a lot more needy and finicky than alfalfa sprouts. You really, really have to water them several times a day in order to get them to kind of be big and thicker than this because these are pretty skinny. But uh, I probably will use these uh, either in a stir fry or sandwiches or whatever. But I am going to try again to get the nice, big, juicy, crispy uh, mung beans. These ones I sprouted in my sort of yogurt setup, so it was a little bit warmer. And then uh, I regularly forgot about them <laughs> because I couldn't see them. So but these are better than the first ones. The first ones didn't like the cold in the house very much and they didn't really grow. So this is my second attempt. Better than the first attempt. I'm going to try again and I'm going to perfect this. I am. Then I didn't use up the semolina flour. I was going to try some pancakes and also some, some uh, semolina biscuits, but I just didn't get around to it. And I will keep trying to use that up. I've got loads of kale powder left, but that's okay. I've learned how to put it in almost everything, but I didn't put it in the in the habitat soup. I guess there was a couple things I could have put it in this week that I didn't, but that's okay. It's going to be a while before we have kale in the garden again, so I've got this to use up before then. And then I have a tiny amount of whole wheat flour left. Hardly any at all. Maybe maybe a cup maybe a cup and a half it's pretty good i'll try to find a picture of the original pantry that we started with thank you guys so much for following along for my entire 2023 pantry challenge i appreciate you being here so very much and I look forward to having you watching for my next challenge. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. You can click my face to subscribe to see more videos from me and to be notified when I start my next challenge. I will see you next time. Bye.